Hi, don't you think it's strange that the monsters from the game Poppy Playtime are so different? Some of them are evil and try to eat us, and others, on the contrary, are kind and try to help. But that's not even the most important thing. The good monsters are too few. They are mostly our opponents. Yes, lately we've been seeing talking monsters more often, but before that, there were far fewer of them. What is the reason for the appearance of so many talking monsters in the game itself? We can only guess. The fact is that some monsters talk and others don't. Either they don't speak or they can't speak. Every character honors us with the privilege of hearing their voice. But why not all characters? Why can't we hear the voices of all the monsters that are in the game? But we haven't even met them. The talking cartons we meet along the way speak using the character's voice so they can talk. All of them. Well, not all of them, actually. Let's figure it out all the way through. Let's figure out the cardboards. And why are they talking to us? They're talking to us. It makes sense. You press a button and they make a sound. I wonder what they're working on since the company's been out of service for 10 years. That's how long it's been and since a horrible event happened, after which almost all the employees died and the monsters were left to run the place. Owned by Playtime. We can talk about what works here and why it works so well, but let's just assume that Playtime is a really high-tech company, as we'll see as the story progresses. And even after all these years, it's working up a storm. Works a treat, and let's just call it a day. So they run on super good batteries, and that's why we hear voices. They just say the standard character phrases like, My name is Hubba. I like to eat salads. That kind of thing, but that was up until Chapter 3. And from then on, the characters start saying things like, They're afraid of something, or they remember us. And then they start screaming, as if to signify their horrible fate. There were similar moments in Chapter 3 too, but they don't actually say anything. It was creepy, I agree. However, everything can be written off as a technical malfunction of the voice or a battery. After all, no one has serviced anything here in a long time. It hasn't been serviced in a long time, and that's why the creepy atmosphere is so skillfully created. But here's why in Chapter 3, the cardboards talk to us as if they've come to life. It sounds strange or trivial, but our main character inhaled gas from the poppy. He was sleepy throughout the entire third chapter. Before that, he was pretty rambunctious, and maybe in those moments he thought the cardboards were talking to him. This is just my speculation, and there's no evidence that he was glitching at the time. I'm just trying to explain these inconsistencies. And about the talking characters, have you noticed that not all the actor versions of the carton follow the same logic? I mean, some don't speak, but how is it possible that over time the experiments started talking, new ones appearing? It's possible. But it's not. Because we have characters who were clearly created before their silent relatives. Yes, the same Poppy doll. She has a distinct voice. And she talks as if she's come to life. And it's the other way around. I have no doubt that the latest technology has been used and it has only improved over time, including monster voices. Let's look at the ones that talk, shall we? She works in a school and teaches children. She just needs to talk. That's why she was created for this particular job. Yeah, and our Mrs. Teacher was probably created in the late 80s when Playtime was being built. What about the rest of Poppy? She originally had that voiceover thing in the commercials. If you remember, it was shown in the first chapter before Playtime started, and she was one of the very first toys. So, what she says can easily be explained by the fact that it was designed to communicate and have fun with kids. Well, that's what it says right in the commercial, Mom. Long legs. Why does it say it's on the grounds of an amusement park? And we know what it was built for. It was built, but it wasn't built to entertain the employees. Sure, it's not bad therapy for stress relief, but it's inappropriate. And besides, we already know it was built to work with children. There are just so many kids, that's why the mascots were created. There needs to be more mascots. That's it. And since we have a series like this, Playtime Company, why don't we animate these characters so that they speak in code? Sure, Dremoth is very silent, but once he speaks, he can talk. He just has this little broken object for a voice. So he sounds hoarse. The prototype grandpa saves the situation. 
Our cat forgot to take his cough medicine. By the way, what about the prototype? What about the prototype? What about the prototype? He is a unique being. This character's identity is shrouded in mystery, and we don't know who he is. We don't know how he was created, if he was created. How he came to be, but one thing is clear. He had a more complex and interesting task than the other monsters, and he speaks in very strange and different voices. So we'll leave that prototype question aside. The characters that don't speak, what happens to them? Why didn't Huggy Wuggy in the first chapter say hello properly? Why didn't he give an angry speech? Mommy Longlegs immediately attacked us by not showing his teeth. But let's look at the big picture of the functions of non-speaking monsters. According to Sue, Huggy Wuggy is a soft statue, and Huggy's functions, barring a few exceptions I'll talk about later, should not be performed. We have a mini caterpillar, the Huggy Wuggy. Why they act like mommy doesn't entertain children, but they don't need to interact with them. They just entertain visitors or children at a certain location. Their job is not to socialize. They have a specific function. They are like a live attraction. She is the female analogy of WKE. Huggy wags are basically already here. Fun creatures, which means there's someone to socialize and have fun with. Apparently, they haven't decided on a kishi yet. After all, they just decided to move it to a dead house. But what's the challenge with all these non-speaking monsters? Why do some of them speak and others don't? All these living monsters have one task and one task only. But the idea came from Dr. Harley Sawyer, who initiated the experiment. Big bodies and these very big bodies were created to reduce financial strain. We don't have to pay workers. We don't have to hire workers. And so that we have big monsters that do all the work, including the entertainment function. So it's free labor, although some employees also do some work. I think it's just some unimportant basic workload. The workload was gradually transferred to the monsters, but we can only make assumptions based on what we know. As for the other mascots, we don't know anything yet. Something about Boxy Boo Boo? Yeah, he just didn't. What his main objective was is not known in detail. Most likely, BS is also free labor. So we can conclude that those mascots tasked with communication were specifically designed with voice devices so they could talk, but they don't need a voice for any other function. You can do without a voice for some exceptions, such as the Popeye's doll I've already discussed, although it too to some extent was designed to communicate. At least the idea behind that doll was to appear to be alive. But that's just my thoughts. And your opinion? Why do some monsters talk and others don't? Write your opinion in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.